Hey guys, Jonathan from AP Media here. You know, with the crisis that we're all enduring, many churches have been challenged and forced to move their services online. And we've seen a lot of different setups for live streaming from basic to advanced. You know, contrary to what you might think, uh, your audience is more likely to be more forgiving of poor video quality rather than audio quality. And so today we wanna give you some basic tips on how to improve the audio quality of your live stream. So the first thing I wanna talk about is location. You know, a lot of factors go into choosing the right place to record, but today I will only wanna focus on the things that actually affect the quality of your audio. The right audio equipment can allow you to record in more challenging situations, but if you have little to no equipment, then choosing your location is a really important step. So first, choose a place that is free of background noise. You're gonna to wanna to shut off any air conditioners or heaters or things that are providing continual background noise and eliminate those things. Also, don't go outside. If you don't have the right equipment or people that can handle the variables like wind or traffic or other noises that are gonna happen outside, then it's best just not to attempt it. So stay indoors. Rooms with wood floor or tile floor are going to have a lot of echo. So hard surfaces are your enemy here. You want to try to change locations, but if you can't, then grab a rug or extra blankets that you have laying around and lay those underneath the area that you're recording. You can drape them on furniture, you can hang them up around the room. The point is we wanna capture all of the sound that's bouncing around the room and stop it from bouncing around. Also avoid sitting at a desk with a wall right in front of you. That wall is going to bounce the sound of your voice right back into the microphone and create really uh, harsh overtones. The second area I want to talk about is equipment. I find it easier to break this up into different scenarios. So first let's take a look at using a phone or tablet, a device setup. If you have no additional audio equipment, the first thing that you want to do is make sure that your speaker or worship leader is a relatively close distance to the actual device that you're recording on. This is gonna help you eliminate some of the room noise or the echo that we talked about from getting on into your live stream. The quickest way to improve your audio outside of choosing the right location is to have an external microphone rather than using the one built in your device. So maybe you don't have a, an external microphone, but a lot of us have these laying around. These are the headphones that came with my phone and they actually have a microphone in them. And you can use this as kind of like a cheap lab mic. So you want this kind of like 15 centimeters below the speaker's mouth. You don't even have to wear the headphones. In fact, you could take the microphone part and tape it uh, to a shirt or the inside of a lapel so that it's kind of hidden and use it as a cheap microphone. But it will definitely make your audio sound better than using the built-in microphone of your device. There are microphones specifically made for plugging into devices and they're relatively inexpensive and work pretty well. So you could consider one of those. You could also use a device called iRig which is available for purchase online. We'll include the link below. This would allow you to plug a analog uh, audio source into your digital device. If you have a DSLR camera like this one or a camcorder that has an HDMI output, you could plug that up to your computer using a video capture device such as this one from Camlink. This would allow you to actually plug an external microphone into the microphone jack on your camera, which would immediately give you a much better audio signal, um, such as the one I'm using right now from Sure. We'll include the link below for that. So if you have multiple sources of audio that you want to be heard, you'll need a mixer or a sound console to consolidate those signals into one output. The sound console will also provide what's called preamps, which will boost the signals of your microphones. Maybe you're thinking, I'm at home, I don't have a sound console. We hear you. Alternatively, if you're streaming from home and you don't have a sound console, you'll need an audio interface such as the Focusrite Scarlett 2i2. 
We'll include the link below. It has built-in mic preamps to boost your signal, and with two inputs, you could plug in a couple of mics or a microphone and a guitar for worship. You would then be able to connect that directly to your camera's audio input jack or to your computer via a USB-C cable. And if you don't have an expensive mic to use, you probably have a few of these laying around your church. This is the Shure SM58 microphone and it's been around for longer than I've been alive. It's extremely reliable and pretty inexpensive and actually works great. If you're live streaming from church, you probably don't need an audio interface but you can just send an output, an auxiliary output from your sound console directly into your camera or to your computer via a USB output if your board is a digital one. However, keep in mind that the levels will definitely need to be adjusted. In other words, you can't just use the same mix that you use for the live room or sanctuary. You'll have to adjust the levels accordingly. If this is starting to confuse you, then just remember test, test, test. You wanna test your broadcast and really pay attention, listen to each audio signal, whether it be an instrument or a microphone, a vocal, a speaker. Listen for distortion. If you hear distortion, then that level needs to come down and you need to adjust it. And look, if your church doesn't have a whole team of people to help you, that it's often best to just go a simple route instead of an entire worship team. Maybe it's just a guitar and one vocal. Another reason to think simple is that your live stream audio is being compressed and the dynamic range is greatly reduced. What does that mean? Imagine your audio is like a church choir and you're trying to fit them into a small closet. The more people that you add to the closet, things start to feel, well, crowded. <laughs> Balancing the audio levels of multiple sources can be challenging. So unless you have the right know-how or equipment, having a simple worship service with good, balanced, high-quality audio is more likely going to be a better experience overall for your audience. We hope that this gets you started and don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel for more videos that will help and inspire you.